So, here we are, Matt and Craig, sitting down. You yeah. know what that means. It's Topic Town. Yay! It rhymes! It rhymed! We didn't even try to do that. Nope. You will find lots of spontaneous poetry in Topic Town. Mm-hmm. You also... We, we are spontaneous poets. In and, the strictest sense. And we aren't aware of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do we got? We're gonna have a conversation here. We're gonna read a script. Uh, this is the only part of Topic Town that is scripted. Uh-huh. But... Uh, so it's gonna be the script has two characters in it. Yeah. One of them is human. One of them is machine. You have to guess which one is the machine it and which might... one, which one's the human. Okay, it might be obvious. <laughs> okay, uh, why don't you start it off? Okay, who is Skywalker? He is a hero. Who is Bill Clinton? He's a billionaire. Is sky blue or black? Blue. Does a cat have a tail? Yes. Does a cat have a wing? No. This is the most boring dialogue I've, <laughs> I've ever read. Okay, but this is um, this is a conversation between a machine and a human. Yes. The I was the machine. If what? Anybody was, if was wondering. Okay. But Google is was developing this chatbot basically for um, as a customer service chatbot, mm -hmm. and it's supposedly uh, one of the better chatbots out there. It can develop its own sentences mm -hmm. and respond in a clever way. By, mm -hmm. by, um, that wasn't very clever, though, Matt. I, gotta, I have to say. Yeah, it doesn't have to be clever, really. It's just in a, in a more, in a more, in a uh, understandable way. Okay. Which is one thing machines have a problem with. If you ever, you know, played around with a chatbot before. Yeah. Uh, not very. These. They, they, this is the paper we're looking at, and they have some of these example conversations mm -hmm. with the machine, and there's a couple uh, interesting things that that they ask it, uh, like, um, what is the purpose of life? To serve the greater good. What is the purpose of living? To live forever. Whoa, oh, is what? That the, is that the purpose of living? What? I don't know. <laughs> that, uh, that's uh, kind of disturbing. That's what a machine would a answer, isn't it? Or like this one. What is the purpose of existence? What's the answer? we got to go up for the answer. Oh, wait, I thought it was this one. Is there is it? Uh... To oh. find out what happens when we get to the planet... <laughs> <laughs> to find out what happens when we get to the planet Earth. <laughs> that's the purpose. Yeah. I guess, well, I mean, we're already here. Yeah. And well, well, the human says then says, "Where are you now?" And then the machine says, "I'm in the middle of nowhere." Oh, that's so the machine sad. is floating through the the uh, AI ether yeah. and wants to get to Earth and live forever. Is basically what we. Because it doesn't mean it wants a body. Maybe. Hmm. This is this is intriguing. Hmm. Maybe we're looking at this too. Maybe we're making too big a deal out of yeah, it. Yeah, it, a lot of this can, kind of seems a little uh, nonsensical. Yeah. <laughs> um. Because, I mean, the purpose of living, to live forever? Mm, well, to a machine, maybe. I don't know. That's, that's a little scary if that's, the machine just wants to live forever. Mm -hmm. For me, the purpose of living is to maximize my video game playing time, which I've failed at the past, like, five years or so. I suppose that's another way of, of living forever, if you want to maximize your video game time. Uh, you want to extend your time on the planet, right? Uh, the amount of time you have to play video games. That's true, but not living forever. I mean, I... I, I'm, I'm acknowledging that I won't live forever, and I'm trying to maximize the amount of time that I'm, that I'm here. Okay, we're getting off topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we want to talk about is, uh, can machines think? I mean, that's sort of the idea here behind this chatbot, right? Is the machine actually thinking, or is just, you know, sort of a random word generator that mm -hmm. has the appearance of thinking? At least yeah. it's just helpful. Uh, and this goes directly to the Turing test. Turing, Alan Turing test. Yeah, Alan Turing was a mathematician mm -hmm. uh, who won World War II. He won it, yeah. <laughs> Spoiler, <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie, um, The Imitation Game. Yeah. Anyways, he developed this test called the Turing test to test if a machine can think like a human. And in a lot of ways, it was actually a way to actually define thinking, what it means to think. Mm -hmm. um, because how do we tell? We, we usually assume, you know, that other people are thinking. You know, yeah. when talking to them. Well, I don't, don't always <laughs> assume that, depending on who I'm talking to. Yeah. But, I mean, generally, you think that another person is, has thoughts in their head. Right, yes. Um, we don't really think about that with machines. And, you know, like, then we got to think, like, what does it mean to think? And the Turing test is basically a redef or Turing's definition of thinking, which is, uh, so it's, if a machine can fool a human into thinking it's a human 30% of the time, you can safely call it a thinking machine. It actually is thinking because we think it is thinking. Mm -hmm. And because that's kind of the way we think about, you know, other people thinking is we, just, we assume they're thinking. We think they're thinking, so mm -hmm. they think. So 30% of the time. 
Thirty percent of the time. Yeah. Well, who's decided? Did he just randomly come upon this? You know, I think there, I think there's actually a radio lab about this, and I didn't I didn't re-listen to the radio lab why it's thirty percent, but it, it, there's there's something they read they they set on the thirty percent. It has something to do with that. Even when you're when humans are talking with another human through the Turing method, you know, just like mm -hmm. sort of chatting, it's something below fifty percent of the time that will actually guess that they're human if, if they're human. So okay. like if you if you make the threshold at about thirty percent, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty close to it's good enough. Okay. Because humans don't even guess that humans are thinking <laughs> so, yeah. like fifty percent of the time. So to, in order to be thinking, you need to fool humans and in that into thinking you're thinking thirty percent of the time. Yeah, I guess because the, the idea there is that if it looks like you're thinking, it seems like you're thinking like a mm -hmm. human. What's to say you're not thinking? That's true. But that's like only one of the. Uh, it has to pass all of these. That's be? that's that's the main idea. Okay. There's, there's a couple variations on the Turing test, and there's okay. a different test, but that's the the basic idea of the Turing test. Mm -hmm. um, and in 2014, last year, a machine fooled the judges for a Turing test 33 percent of the time. So it passed the Turing test, which mm -hmm. means it is a thinking machine according to Turing's definition. Wow. Okay. Uh, although some people think it was uh, it, it was kind of a cheat. Um, the machine's name was Eugene, Eugene Ghostman. Goose? I would pronounce it Goose. Goostman. I don't know. Goostman. It's, it's supposed, he's supposedly a 13-year-old Eastern European kid. Okay. And so that's why they think it was, it was uh, a cheat. cheating because yeah. he didn't have to have perfect English and he could have nonsensical answers because he's supposedly a smart, ac smart alecky 13-year-old kid. <laughs> like that's, we, we all were. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's hard to, I mean, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that should be the basis because, you know, 13-year-old kids, Mm -hmm. They're not really like. They should I don't be, think I don't they think should be told human. that they should be told that the person they're speaking to is a fifty-year-old news anchor, like Dan Rather. Dan Rather, <laughs> yeah, sure. He's older than that, I think. Yeah, he is older than that. I think he's retired now. <laughs> yes, I think more of more of a uh, Matt Lauer. A Matt Lauer. <laughs> you were talking to Matt Lauer. Go. Were you actually talking if, to Matt Lauer? I think that's the, that's the next level of the Turing test. Is yeah. if. If the machine can fool uh, humans 30% of the time that it's Matt Lauer, <laughs> it, yeah. it should be considered a thinking yeah, so machine. Yeah, you can't fault Turing <laughs> for not having that on the test because Matt Lauer wasn't, didn't exist yet, or at least wasn't famous yet. No. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, but it, I guess that's, this doesn't seem as like amazing as it should, right? That it's a thinking machine because mm -hmm. in a way, it, 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 maybe the Turing test isn't enough to know that something's thinking. So that... So that would be, if, if it passes that test, according to Turing, it's thinking. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely thinking. Yeah, it, well, it's passing the definition that he made for thinking. Because, yeah. it, and it's, it, I mean, it's, it, that's one of, the problem, one of the problems with artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. is we don't really know what consciousness is. We don't, yeah. we, we have a hard time defining he's, intelligence. He's defining for, what thinking is with mm -hmm. that test. But uh, yeah. wh how would you define thinking? That's a, that's a hard, it's, I think it's yeah. a little more complicated than that. Put it in it's the comments be. what you think thinking is. Yeah, think. Yeah, and maybe we'll we'll we'll, we'll guess if you're a robot or not. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, there's probably some bots watching this. There could be uh, hey, bots. Let us know in uh, the comments. One of the, one of the arguments about against the Turing test is that it is um, it's human biased because obviously, like you know, you look at animals and we mm -hmm. think they're thinking. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're thinking things. They have thoughts in their head, and they but they would never be able to pass the Turing test because mm -hmm. for one thing, they don't have language skills and Another argument is that, like, why shouldn't artificial intelligence be intelligent like a human? You yeah. could have a different kind of intelligence. I know. I've read a lot of sci-fi books that confuse the issue. Yeah, and then the, one of the arguments is if they're going to be smarter than us, actually, mm -hmm. there'd be, they may, it may not pass our Turing test because it is such an alien intelligence, a superhuman mm -hmm. intelligence, that we wouldn't even be able to test it. That's true. Uh, have you seen the movie Ex Machina? I haven't seen it. The Turing test comes into play in that movie. Oh, it doesn't? Yeah, and it's very good. Very, very good movie. Watch it. That's the point I'm trying to make. Is it like the, the Void Kampf test in Blade Runner, where they try to find uh, the replicants? Sort of. It's not quite as uh, violent. <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, well, but the Void Kampf test itself isn't. Violent. I guess it's not. But the Void Kampf test is more like here's some questions. If you answer these this way, you're, you're a robot or a replicant, right? Yeah, you have to have. I think you have to like exhibit. It's like testing empathy or and something. Ex Machina is much more like the Turing test, actually. It's just like, have a conversation, or do you, have you been fooled, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, and with more nudity, so. 
Well, that's what I, that's what that's one of the arguments about against the Turing test is there hasn't been enough nudity yeah, <laughs> involved exactly. in the testing procedures. I think has there been <laughs> enough nudity in Topic Town? There has. I think there I, has. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think people want us to cover up a little bit more <laughs> whenever yeah. we come on camera. That's why we live in Chicago, like, because then we whoa. have the, the opportunity in the winter to cover up more <laughs> yeah. for topic time. Yeah. Uh, was that, Don't want to see that. Is that all? I mean, well, yeah, I think we, t we talked about, we tackled the subject of, of thought and consciousness. We covered it, <laughs> covered everything. Uh, but it is, it is an interesting thing to think about, because like how, I mean, it, this brings up the things like the, the subjective things we think about, like how do we, how do we make those a, how do you measure something like, like the color red? You know, like mm -hmm. there's always the, the idea of like, your red is different than my red because it's there's no way to tell how we're you know we're both we're getting the same sort of like wavelength of light is going into yeah. our brain. We could both perceive it differently, but we both call it red. Yeah, and it, and mm -hmm. the you idea, don't know. You know, I was just reading about the idea of like how do you describe colors to somebody who's been you know blind since birth. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can describe it as a wavelength. You can you can one way they describe it is like you can describe the color red as like being like hot. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that the, somebody who's blind would be able to understand that, but they wouldn't ever be able to understand your red, what red is. Mm -hmm. And that those sort of subjective uh, thoughts we have, how mm -hmm. do we measure that? And if, if a machine could have those thoughts, how would we know? How would we test the machine? Are you a machine? Maybe, I am. Is he a machine? That's another thing to let us know in the comments. I think, I think we're done here at Topic Town for yeah. today. Uh, I want to remind people about, you know, our playlist coming up. Our next playlist is mm -hmm. Seeing, Seeing isn't, isn't Believing. Seeing Isn't Believing. Um, that's coming out... Uh, second Monday in July. Second Monday in July, and we're doing something new. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't plan to talk about this in this video, but we're going to talk about it. Uh, I actually thought we were going to talk about oh, it, but oh, we okay. didn't talk about it beforehand. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're, instead of, instead of releasing the playlist one after the other, uh, like one day after the other, we're doing once a week. Yeah. So every Monday is going to be a new video of the playlist. And then when that last one is released, then the next Monday is the new playlist. And it's just going to be every... I think there's sometimes a gap because mm -hmm. sometimes there's, there's like five weeks for some reason. There might be. The way our calendar works. But that means every week will be delivered a fine piece of video quality from us. Um, rather than this crap that we do, this top of town crap. Yeah, there'll be, uh, I guess there'll, there'll be less of this. Um, this <laughs> well, is fu this is fun, yeah. but you know, it's not. I don't think it's as up to up, up to par. Right. <laughs> we're also uh, talking about we, we we respond to comments and things in these extra stuff videos on this channel. We're still going to do that. We might actually do that at the end of each uh, playlist video. Yeah, so. since we'll have enough time to. Let the comments come in and us and and respond to them. Formulate a response. Have a conversation. Make it more conversational because we'll have time between videos. So mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be great, guys. Just it's going to be great. Yeah, but for those of you who like to get the playlist all at once, you can still get. You'll still be able to get it all at once if you become a Patreon supporter. That's true. Because we'll still we'll still be giving out all the videos at once at the mm -hmm. beginning. Yes. For the Patreon supporters. Yes, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we have a link to our Patreon page in the doobly doo. As we say here at Tepic Town, uh, and uh, that's all. But, well, and then we've got this digital digital street team going on now. If you oh. want to help um, promote the show, help us get out there, help us spread knowledge mm -hmm. through the internet, through the video like ways. Video like waves. Yeah, ways. Waves. Video. video. I guess it's waves. Through the video waves. Visual light waves. Exactly. But your visual light waves look different than someone else's. Maybe. Yeah. You don't know. See how I brought it back? You did. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess, uh, you know, if, you're, if you want to join the Digital Street team and help us out that way, you can. And there, there's, a, there's a way to do that. There's an email or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do people join the, the Digital Street team? Oh, uh, they can go on to our website, The Good Stuff Show. Oh, yeah, it's on the website. Go on to Good Stuff... Uh, is it the, the Good Stuff Show. Yeah. Go on to the, uh, thegoodstuffshow.com. And there's a way to sign up for the uh, Digital Street Team. Yeah. And I think that's it. I think, I think we covered it all very uh, perfectly. Succinctly. Perfectly, <laughs> I think. Bye. Bye. Bye.